morning. I am very excited to be with all of you today as we do our best to get this second semester off to a great start. My hunch is that a number of us might find ourselves yearning for our winter term mode over these next few days as we adjust to a schedule and pace we have not experienced since early December. This pivot from winter term to the second semester can be a bit of a jolt, so I'm hoping the extra day between these two distinct modes, along with today's half-day start, will help us ease in the direction of getting our more traditional school legs under us. There's a lot to look forward to between now and when we head into spring break, just six weeks from today. I'm certain we're up to it. We have a fair amount to accomplish this morning before we are due in class at 9 a.m., so I have just two thoughts I'd like to explore for a bit ahead of getting us ready for the day's main event. After all, how often do we have a Brook School celebrity with us in Ashburn Chapel? The first of my two thoughts centers on winter term and the extraordinary amount of a different sort of work that goes into making these nearly three weeks of our year feel so different and go so well. It was just three weeks ago this morning when we heard from Ms. McDonough and a number of experienced winter term students here in chapel about what was to come. We were excited, uncertain, curious, and about to embark on experiences and actual journeys in a number of cases that would be firsts of their kind for most of us. If I have a lament about winter term and I don't have much of one, it would only be that while we are all immersed in the experiences we are having, we are not privy or all that in touch with the experiences others are having in ways that are counter to the mode we were in during the first semester and are about to be in over the second semester, we are intentionally siloed in order to soak up all of whatever it is we have taken on. This past Saturday's symposium and various winter term performances that took place at the end of last week do go a long way towards revealing what others have been doing, but perhaps the most wonderful aspect of winter term is that we can't fully share what we have been up to with others. You have to have done it, or felt it, or built it, or seen it, or considered it, or scaled it, or tasted it, or tested it, or thought about your particular it in order to know it. It is this immersive experience that winter term proves to be that has everything to do with what I love about it. What a treat it was this year to spend my nearly three weeks with the 11 members of the Hawks and Doves Winter Term Congress, ably led by Speaker of the House, none other than Taewon Moon. He runs a tight ship. And as much as the content of this course appeals to me, feels and is important and was brought to life by the group's curiosity and the expertise of our guests, mostly alums, shared with us over Zoom here on campus or in their places of work in Washington, I find myself equally grateful for the permission the school gives us to be in this kind of mode for a short and timely stretch in our year. Well, it ends up being three of my busiest weeks of the year, and I'm challenged to keep my head above water with my day job as head of school along the way. I see and feel all of us being and living differently in early January. We learn more about those we embed with during winter term than we do in the run of school. And I think this adds to our sense of one another in a way that enriches our community. After all, how often do I get a chance to earn the nickname Airport Dad? You can look that up on TikTok after chapel if you'd like. Or be on a student's Be Real page or story or whatever happens to be the correct term to describe how one does be real every single day. There is so much in between the lines in our winter term experiences that I enjoy. And this 12th edition of Brooks School was a huge hit from my seat. So I wanna thank Ms. McDonough for doing a mind boggling amount of work to coordinate, organize, support, facilitate, and ensure all of us we're able to focus on the courses we are engaged in. I want to thank Ms. Knowles and scores of colleagues for organizing and then delivering evening options that added such a nice element to these few weeks. I want to thank Reverend Afori and the DEI prefects and beloved community ambassadors for organizing, 
such a fitting celebration of Dr. King's legacy with Miss Stevens Holsey gracing our school with her presence and sharing Polly Murray's inspiring and important story with all of us. I want to thank Ms. Sheree and all those who supported the logistical work coordinated by Ms. McDonough, Ms. Knowles, and others in making certain that buses ran on time and we got to the many places we visited collectively. It's a long list. And finally, I want to thank all of you for digging in, giving something different to try, and opening yourself up to an experience I believe you will draw from in different ways as the year and years move along. You all make winter term fun, and I want to thank you for that. The second of my two thoughts centers on one's legacy and impact on others in life, something I have been in a lot of thought about over the past month for a variety of reasons. Yet when I received my invitation to participate in today's Giving Day hype video, more to come about that in a moment, and learned that we would be shooting the video along Main Street, I immediately thought about Patrick Curley, Brooks School class of 1969, who died in early December. I will be joining a number of others at a celebration of his life in New York on Friday morning. Patrick's name is not likely to be one you are all that familiar with, nor should it be for any reason. Yet when I think about our pedestrianized and completed Main Street, the finest boarding school main drag anywhere in New England, I think of Patrick. Why, you wonder? Mr. Curley attended Brooks in the later 1960s, graduated in 1969, went to Trinity College, and eventually found his way into a distinguished career as an architect. Our school has had many strokes of good fortune over the course of its now 96 years of life, and the devotion of trustees to the school's well-being through the generations has been vital to what all of us enjoy today. But I don't think there is any single trustee who had a more profound impact on how our school's physical campus feels and functions than Patrick Curley. This is particularly true of Main Street. Mr. Curley joined the Board of Trustees in 1995, the year Loose Library opened. And for the past 28 years, his hand and feel for our campus has played a behind the scenes role in reshaping the school in ways that we all routinely enjoy day in and day out, more so now than ever. From Wilder Dining Hall, to the Science Building, to the Danforth Squash and Rowing Center, to the Class of 2020 Quad, to this Ashburn Chapel, to the Center for the Arts, and all the way to our new admission building and the green space and quads we have added along Main Street over time. We have Mr. Curley to thank for his vision, wisdom, expertise, and above all else, his love for and commitment to Brooks School. I spoke with him in late October when he let me know that his cancer diagnosis had taken a turn for the worse. At the time, he reflected on how much he enjoyed being involved with the school for all these years. I shared with him that few have had as much impact on any institution as he has had on Brooks School and where and how we wonderfully bump into one another each and every day. I'm certain that the plan for our Giving Day video would have been precisely the type of thing, use of the magnificent space we have, that would bring a smile to his face. So as we're getting everyone excited about Giving Day this morning, keep Mr. Curley in mind when you look around and think about all we enjoy every single day we're here. Thanks for that. And now, for some instructions about today's main event. Giving Day, which this year is scheduled for Thursday, February 9th, is the one day of the year when we make a concerted 24-hour push to support the Brooks Fund, which provides just about one of every eight dollars we need in order to run the school every year. We do our best to promote this important day in any and all ways we can, particularly on social media, and this year, we are going to shoot the video you have been encouraged to prepare for immediately after chapel. Here is how it will work. After exiting chapel from back to front, finding our way into our Brooks School gear and whatever posters we are planning to display, and bringing our customary school spirit to the event, 
We will get into position along Main Street between Wilder Dining Hall and Loose Library. There is a place for everyone and we will help you find one. Once we are in position, our own Kata Clark, the finest cross country runner in all of New England, and all of our school prefects will be running down Main Street waving the Brooks School flag. Your job is to erupt into raucous cheering, much like you would be doing in support of the New England Patriots when they are playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> this brings me to today's Brooks School celebrity. I know for a fact that he is on a number of your fantasy teams. And Pittsburgh Steelers star tight end Pat Frymouth, Brooks School class of 2018, is in the building this morning. He will be waiting with me at the end of the run congratulate runners and work with Mr. Waters on awarding House Cup points to the student who demonstrates the most school spirit at the event. And I'm sure he'll be glad to take some pictures with all of you at the end. My plan is to get my jersey autographed. <laughs> so let's do well with this, have some fun, and thanks for your participation. 